Because I've heard there's not a whole lot of polling to begin with. No, it's very limited, and we already know how badly pollsters did in the election in November. There's not much to suggest that they're going to get it right in January. The numbers that I have seen, including some that I've done myself, give the Republicans a very, very narrow edge within the margin of error, which is very important. We have David Perdue up by two points, Kelly Loeffler up by 3.5. But I want to emphasize that's within the margin of error, and turnout can change those results completely. This is going to be the most hard-fought Senate election ever in modern American history. More money has been spent. And I can now tell you that more people have voted in, in already early than have ever voted early in a Georgia Senate race in Georgian history. Yeah, as I understand it, Frank, the initial indications were there are actually more people voting earlier in this runoff than they did in the November 3, which would be very surprising if that's true, because typically runoffs, as I understand it, Frank, you would know better than I, not a lot of people show up. And they don't show up. And what's happening this time is that Republicans who were told not to vote early by Donald Trump are not heeding his advice. But that's still a concern for the Republican candidates. Are people going to stay home because they're angry about the result? One half of Georgia Trump voters still believe that he won the race, and, and of course, he did not. And th the question is whether they will participate feeling that the election system is rigged. And I can't answer that now. We are, in fact, going to do focus groups uh, over the next 72 hours. I'd be happy to share them with Bloomberg uh, listeners and viewers. Uh, it, it has gotten ugly. All the ads out, virtually all of them are negative. And, uh, and everyone's on pins and needles in Washington and in Atlanta because this is going to determine tax policy, regulatory policy, foreign policy. Everything is at stake because of these two seats. Well, please come back and tell us about those focus groups, provided it doesn't interfere with your holidays, uh, Frank. So let me ask about another development. We've now got a deal on this stimulus, a little under $900 billion or so. Is that likely to play a role in these runoff races at all? I heard it suggested this morning by somebody that maybe it makes it a little bit better for the Republicans because the Democrats can't say, boy, you guys didn't get the stimulus done. Exactly. And in fact, I think that there's maybe half a percent or even a percent of the voters who are angry and blamed the White House for not getting a stimulus package done just before the election. We're going through that same process right now. The public is they want this. They want this. They don't care how much it costs. They want money put into the economy. They want money for their own pockets. They want money for small business. This is not an environment that's normally conducive to a conservative candidate or Republican because the public believes, quite frankly, just spend it all. They're nervous. Uh, they're having issues uh, paying their bills. And so in that sense, it's good for the GOP. However, when we really do start to look at the deficit and the debt, in the months to follow, I think there's going to be a big reckoning towards all politicians and the idea that we've gone a little bit insane, a little bit crazy in how much money we're spending. Well, it is pretty stunning. I mean, it, we're, we're saying nine, only $900 billion. It is the second largest stimulus in history after the CARES Act as a practical matter. But, but Frank, talk about the broader politics, because a lot of people, including we have Chuck Schumer just right away saying, we're going to come back and we're going to ask for more in the new year. Uh, what do you think the policy would look like in 60 days and 90 days on this if people do come back and say, we need yet another round? It's clear this is one of the big dividing lines between Republicans and Democrats. Republicans are focused on the deficit and the debt. Democrats are focused on spending and putting money in people's pockets. Right now, the balance is on the Democratic side. The American people actually are less focused. In fact, we did a study of the 23 biggest issues in America, and the debt came in the bottom six. That's how much it has decreased as an issue. The public is prioritizing what's happening right now. My suggestion that things are going to change, it may take months, it may take a year, but at some point, the American people know that you can't spend mo more money than you have. The public knows there's got to be a tax increase. The question is on who, and that's why these Senate races are so important. If the Democrats win both of these races, they will repeal Donald Trump's tax cuts. I'm pretty sure of it. If the Senate race, if the Democrats win both of these, there will be an expansion, a significant expansion in, in public spending. If the Republicans are able to keep even one of those races, then they keep control of the Senate, and then the policies that they've been promoting for the last couple of years will, will stay in place. And even on that, the public is very 
uh, divided. I'm not surprised that this is so controversial. I'm not surprised that the ads are so negative. Because so much is at stake and because the public realizes I'm going to be affected by it, my pocketbook, my wallet, my bank account, my savings will be determined by what happens on the 5th of January. So, 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 Frank, one thing that I'm puzzling about a little bit is President Trump, because it is absolutely clear he does not want to leave the stage. He wants to stay in center stage. At the same time, we've got some big things going on, whether it's the stimulus. We really didn't hear much from him on that at all. We've got the huge computer hack. Don't hear very much. Don't hear much about the vaccine, for goodness sakes, that his warp speed really helped get us there. How is he really going to maintain his position in the center of the stage when he's really spending his time talking about maybe martial law and redoing the election, things like that? I think that history will not look well on the president being quiet, being incommunicado when it comes to uh, the cyber uh, breach of security. I think it will not uh, be effective for him uh, or positive for him when they look at this stimulus vote. I think that in the end, the American people, they themselves have moved on and they moved on to these other crises that are affecting them in their day to day lives. We're losing more than 3,000 people every day. We're having more than 100,000 people diagnosed. I'm someone, look, I, I think you know this. I, I have a pre existing condition. I suffered right. a stroke in January. I'm more concerned about COVID than I am about relitigating an election that is done, it's yeah. over with. Joe Biden won, and now yeah. we go on to Georgia and then we go on to governing.